Ciao darlings, Eugene here. Hope you're all well. Got for you today from Lush. This is Breath of God. I don't know if it's in collaboration with Gorilla Perfume, but they've got, you know, that labeled and branded all over their packaging and bottles. But Lush is a, a, a bath bomb store for all I know. I go in there and all I can smell is soap and bath bombs and all these kind of quirky soapy products my wife goes in there all the time so kind of the anti niche to the niche because the fragrance is definitely not you know designer level or something that's very trending at Sephora or Macy's or the Hudson's Bay this is way beyond that <laughs> and uh depending on how you view it what your perceptions are that could be either good or bad very controversial fragrance i'm finding but you can definitely see not really one for packaging this is probably one of the most garbage packaging i've ever seen the bottle actually looks like it came from bath and body works like a soap dispenser um but it's definitely not Bath and Body Works or Victor Victoria's Secret, even though that's probably like, you know, the kind of line that they're they're targeting that that audience. Um, <laughs> Breath of God is definitely special, at least to me in a very good way, which it wasn't always. But we'll get to that. But this packaging, yeah, you can see the cardboard box. It's just very flimsy cardboard. Um, the bottle, like the sticker, isn't even centered. On the front or the back it's just kind of like placed on i'm not sure if that's done purposely but it's everything's just kind of crooked the sprayer is got no collar around the the atomizer you can just see where it's just crimped on it it looks really cheap the cap is just really thin plastic i thought it was tin at one time but you know it's definitely plastic i'm sure this is not magnetic at all and, uh, you know, Lilabo can only be envious of this. I think that's kind of what they set out to do. But, you know, at $300, I don't think Lilabo can even compare with this $100 per 100 mil perfume. Or the, the 50 mil packaging, 50 mil bottles are, sorry, I think it comes in 30 mil, which are $50. But the packaging has changed a lot um, since the launch of Breath of God. Originally started in those little black they look like bulbs and then they got bigger with kind of this rainbow pattern design on them. And this is the current, this is what's on their market today. So, you know, the packaging is not all that great, but don't let that packaging, the cheap packaging and uh, the type of store where this product is sold at, let you, um, let it get in the way of your, your, your thoughts, because this is definitely a quality fragrance. And one way I can tell of a good quality fragrance, one that's well-crafted and, and made from you know good sources, is no matter how much of this stuff I spray on, I never seem to get a headache. And the sprayer is horrible too. It just doesn't spray a whole lot. And so I'm, I'm never really sure how much I'm putting on, but I just keep going and going and going. And I've noticed like, it doesn't really affect, um, you know, it doesn't come off synthetic to me. It doesn't smell cheap in any way. It smells really high quality and doesn't matter how much I spray, I'm, I'm fine with it. Never does it choke me up or get cloying or, or give me a migraine. So that's, you know, fantastic. Um, so Breath of God, kind of a two-faced perfume I see. You know, the first time I've ever smelt this and I, kind of sought it out after reading a lot about it on on base notes it had a little bit of hype so about five years ago I sought out breath of God my wife's always in in lush every time we go to the mall she likes to go in the lush and check out the bath bombs and I ran over and I sprayed on breath of God and I was instantly hit with you know it to me it did not smell anything godly it smelled like um halitosis of satan or satan's asshole it was one of the most horrendous things i ever thought was bottled and i couldn't understand why anyone would make a perfume smelling like this and um it definitely reminded me of a few few things uh jicky came to mind from guerlain and le parfum de trace 
from Frederick Mall. And that's, you know, just kind of reminding me of really bad breath halitosis. Um, I definitely got that from Jiki, kind of a, had an animalic accord. Le Parfum de Trace, it was that that melon and aldehydic accord, which which is also in this. So it was like almost like this sour, rotting, dry herbalness. I was just like really disgusted. And I, 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 was, I thought this is the worst thing I've ever smelled. And every time I'd go back to Lush, I would run to this perfume and I just kind of test it. But I never really had the courage to spray it on me. I'd always put a little bit on my hand and that for that way, if I didn't like it, I can wash it off. I'd put some on a blotter and I keep it up in my in my shirt pocket and I can always just revisit it. But it was absolutely vile and disgusting. But if you ever looked at those pictures, it's kind of like, you know, the two face picture. And depending on, you, you know, your perception and which way you look at the pic picture, you're going to see something different. And there's the one that always stands out in my mind is the one, um, the old wretched witch with the mole on her nose and she's wearing this I don't know I think it's the young girl that's wearing the shawl and if you look at the picture from the other angle or view um, it's a very young pretty lady wearing a shawl or something like that and that's that's kind of the picture that stands out in my mind when I think of Breath of God it's definitely two-faced and depending on your perception you're definitely going to get a different view of it and um, it wasn't until recently I went back, you know, my wife dragged me back into Lush and I always run to the perfume section and I spray, I was like, fuck this, I'm going to spray it on my skin. And instantly, you know, I was transformed and I definitely got a view of the young, pretty girl. No longer even thought about the nasty vileness that came to my mind before. And my wife came over and I said, you know what? This is really good perfume. She's, she's like, I always told you, you know, Lush makes good perfume. And she ripped the bottle off of my hand and she's like, I'm going to buy this for you. And she took the 100 mil and I was like, no, no, no. If you're going to buy it, get me the smaller size, the 30 mil. And we kind of, you know, stood there and we argued for a bit and we juggled bottles. And she finally agreed. She took the 30 mil. And as we were walking through the store, she was going in and out of shops just looking for stuff. And I was out in the hallway. I was like, this is really good. Like, really, really good. And um, while she was shopping, I ran back. And I exchanged it for the 100 mil. I was like, I'm definitely going to be wearing this. It's not just, you know, a, a strange perfume that I want for a showpiece. This is definitely something I want to wear and, and have and um, really get to know. So, what is Breath of God? To me, firstly, it's a very woody perfume. It's all woods. It's dry cedar. It's almost like freshly cut cedar. It's got uh, frankincense, so it's very dry, let me say. It's very, very dry with contrasting melon and citrus notes. But um, dry woods, cedar, dry frankincense, dry resins, dry vetiver, not the wet green lush vetiver. It's dry vetiver. Uh, Cade oil. Uh, I'm, I'm sure there's lavender in here, very dry lavender, very dry patchouli. And then you get that contrasting melon notes and aldehydes. And I'm sure that's kind of where the really rotting perception came. Aldehydes and melon. That's kind of what I got in Le Parfum de Trace. But so this perfume was inspired. I think the, I'm not sure if it's the owner of um, Lush that is the perfumer that's kind of what i've been told that lush but i can't really picture that the perfumer is also the owner but whoever the perfumer is like just go, like researching he's only ever perfumed for lush i can't see that he's credited or sourced with any other perfumes it's just whatever lush has um, listed under them so the perfumer or the inspiration for this was um just the owner visiting tibet and it's really, you know, the fresh um, country air mixed with uh, resins and smoke and incense from the temples. And I can definitely see that. I've never been to Tibet, but, you know, when I read the story, I can definitely um, be put there. To me, it's I, I, I get kind of like a 
you know, cathedral or monastery, because it's got a lot of woods and resins and a lot of frankincense. It's very incensey and churchy. Um, wore it to my mom's house not too long ago. I got some pretty funny comments, but I didn't really want to say it was my perfume. My mom's just like, she got a whiff of it. And she's like, oh, what is that smell? And I didn't really want to tell her it was my perfume. And, uh, you know, a couple moments later in the other room, my brother, uh, he walked by and he's like, oh, what is that smell? Something smells like really weird and strange. Again, I didn't want to say anything, but I wore it again and I walked past my wife and she's like, oh, what is that smell? I was like, really? Are you kidding? It must be my perfume. So she came over, she had a whiff. She's like, what are you wearing? And I told her breath of God. And she's like, it doesn't smell anything like it did in the store the other day. And I was like, okay, so what does it smell like? And she said, it smells like a night of uh, debauchery coming home the next day, waking up the next morning and just smelling like a smoky ashtray. And as soon as she said that, I definitely got that vibe as well. Um, you know, being myself coming home from a heavy night of drinking and smoking and being there the next morning, uh, smelling like an ashtray and, and, and cigarette smoke in your hair and clothes and, um, you know, can't wait to get in the shower and wash this crap off. Um, it definitely smells, it's got a dirty ashtray vibe to it, but being a perfume, it's not as disgusting as that absolutely sounds. This is way more, um, it's abstract in that way. Abstract's a good word. We're going to call it abstract. So, <laughs> You know, I can definitely see that very smoky, very resinous, ashy, dry, woody, um, resinous, just absolutely gorgeous. For me. Now for me, it's gorgeous. I couldn't always say that. And I don't know what it was that flipped, but I guess just really putting it on my skin, letting it develop and, and come to me naturally instead of, going, you know, like a hound dog. But that's pretty much breath of God for me. And, um, the whole line is kind of unique in that way. Um, they're not really mainstream or ma they're definitely not mass appealing. They're not what you would expect. Also from, you know, a soap store to be selling this It's very surprising. I couldn't ever imagine Victoria's Secret or uh, Bath and Bed and Beyond or whatever carrying a line like this. But they've also got Lust, the Jasmine Bomb, which is supposed to represent, you know, a night of sexual fever and, 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 you know, clothes on the floor in the morning after they've got another one called rentless, which is supposed to be politically correct for homeless and, sp and smell like a homeless guy. That one smelled pretty good <laughs> in an odd way. And there was another one that stood out to me. It was coffee, something coffee cardamom. I think it was coffee cardamom smelled really, really good. So those were the other ones that really stood out to me. So yeah, coffee cardamom, I think it was called. But anyway, yeah. And for all you dick noses that are always worried about performance and longevity and all that garbage, you know, it performs exceptional on me. And I never have issues with performance. And that's why I don't really talk about performance in my reviews. Because to me, it's more about the art of the perfume than how much it's going to choke my neighbor out or who's going to smell me or who's going to compliment me. Because I don't give a fuck about that stuff. But it does perform, you know, again, with every breath I take, I can almost get a good whiff of this. So there you go. If you've smelt breath of God, let me know what you guys think. Um, quite controversial. I won't even lie. Uh, a lot of people love it. A lot of people hate it. And if you don't like it, it's not your cup of tea. I totally understand because I didn't like it for the longest time. I thought it was absolutely hideous and vile. It smelled like Satan's anus, like just one of those things, but um, something turned and I can see a lot of sediments in this bottle. I'm not sure if they're filtered or what, but just something I'm noticing. Yeah, let me know what you think. Anyway, I am Eugenius. You are the whack pack. We're mental for perfumes. Some of you are for wearing shit from Sephora. Knock that crap out. Anyway, I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching.